Hi everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today I wanna to show you how to make patterns by draping on a dress form. So there's two main ways to make patterns. One is the flat pattern drafting method. And I have a video on that that shows you how to pattern draft using a skirt block. So if you wanna check that out, check out this video. It'll give you most of the skills you need to make almost any pattern you can think of through flat pattern drafting. But today I wanna to show you how you can drape on a dress form and make a pattern that way too. Most of the YouTube tutorials that I've seen on draping teach you how to drape to create a basic block or a sloper that fits you. And that's fantastic, but that would to me lead, your, your next step would be to use that sloper in flat pattern drafting. But you can just make whatever style you want on a dress form through draping. It's really fun. You feel really like a designer. You feel like you're on Project Runway when you're draping. My students love it. I personally prefer flat pattern drafting. It's more like architectural. I can kind of see what I'm doing more. So draping is not my favorite, but I know my students really enjoy it. Now, when I say draping, it doesn't mean that the style you're going to be creating is very drapey. It can be as structured as you want. Draping just means you're going to be making it on the dress form. You'll be draping fabric on the dress form to make your pattern pieces. Good. You'll need a dress form that's either a standard size that you want to create or an adjustable one that you have adjusted to your own measurements. So you're going to take a tape measure and measure your bust, waist, and hip. So the fullest point, the smallest point, and the fullest point. You'll get those three measurements and then you'll measure your dress form and adjust the dress form until it matches you. If you can't get it to match you, if there's just certain places where, you know, they're not very adjustable dress forms are not really the greatest, but if there's some places where you just can't get it to match you, you can do things like, like padding out the dress form. You can put your own bra on the dress form if you need to make the bust line larger. You can even put batting or padding around the waistline to make that larger to match you. Right? You can't do much to make it smaller, but you can pad it out wherever you need the dress form to be bigger to match you. Good? All right, so that is step one, is just making your dress form as much like you as possible. Good? You also are going to need some very skinny ribbon or twill tape. I love this one. I ordered this from, literally it's called twilltape.com. I love this because it's just an eighth of an inch wide, so that's fantastic. I haven't seen this anywhere else. Normally at school, we just use quarter inch twill tape. I like the skinnier one even better though than the quarter inch, just because the, the finer your line, the more accurate you're going to be. But you know what? In a pinch, you can use ribbon. You can use some a, a narrow cord, anything like that, just to create your style lines on the dress form. So I'll show you how to do that. I have seen it recommended to use a one eighth wide tape. Um, which seems like a brilliant idea, but you know what? I really dislike it because when you put your pins into that tape, of course your pins get all gluey and gummy and it's terrible. I don't like that at all. So stick with the twill tape. That would be my recommendation. Then you'll need some fabric to drape in. Your fabric should be similar to the fabric that your final product is going to be. Especially when you're starting out, you don't drape in your good fabric. You're gonna drape in something like a muslin. This is actually an old, curtain that has a big stain on it and I'm going to use that but if your final product is going to be made out of a knit then you need to drape in a knit. If your final product is going to be a woven you drape in a woven of a similar weight similar hang like it hangs the same way similar drapiness. If your final product is going to be a knit you need to drape in a knit. If your fabric is woven and has a bit of stretch, then you really should be draping in a, in a fabric that's woven and has a little bit of stretch. So find the fabric that's gonna most closely match your good fabric, good? If your good fabric is cheap, then go ahead and use it if you've got lots. Other things you'll need are some pins and a good sharp pencil. And as always, I'm gonna recommend my favorite see-through ruler and even the very form hip curve. And of course, you'll need your fabric shears. After we have the dress form adjusted to fit our own measurements, then we get to do the fun part, which is planning out the style lines using the twill tape. You're just gonna be kind of drawing lines on your dress form using twill tape. At this point, I don't really know what my design is going to be. I'm just going to spend a few minutes 
playing around with my twill tape and I can either make my garment symmetrical or asymmetrical. It's completely up to me as the designer. Let's keep it simple and let's not do sleeves. We'll keep this sleeveless, good? Okay, so I'll just be playing around a little bit here, making really whatever design I can dream up. And your lines should connect front to back here. The twill tape lines mark the perimeter of the garment as well as any seams within the garment. I still haven't really even decided what's going to go in here. If I want to have that piece drapey or do I want to have it tailored with a dart? I can do either one. I don't want the skirt panel to come all the way up here, so I better get myself one more line here. So my bodice lines are in place, the shape of the bodice, and really the sky is the limit, whatever shape you want it. I've done asymmetrical, you can totally do it symmetrical. If you're going to do your symmetrical, then you really only have to drape half. Right, it'll be, it'll be a cut on fold piece. So you only have to drape half if it's symmetrical, but the full thing if it's going to be asymmetrical. Make sense? So I'm just checking to make sure I like my lines, that it's going to look smooth and beautiful. This'll be a dress or even a gown if I wanted. So first I'm gonna show you how to drape the top part and then I'll show you how to drape the skirt. Good. To start actually draping, I need a block of fabric that is just bigger than each section. I've got my old curtain here and I just want to hold that up. It just needs to be bigger than my section by a few inches in both directions. And I'm just going to snip and tear that piece. So this piece of fabric that I have now is obviously just two dimensional, right? It's wide and it's long and we're going to be trying to shape it onto a three-dimensional form. So we have to figure out what to do with the extra fullness around the bust line. So to control the fullness around the bust, you have a few options. You can do seaming, you can do darts, gathering. All of those are just different ways of managing the fullness around a three-dimensional form. With a woven fabric, I do need to do one of those methods, but if I'm using a knit, then it's a different story because what I can do is just do all my shaping by stretching the knit. I could have that whole piece just smooth because the knit stretches and makes its way around a 3D form. So that's why draping in knits is so different from draping in a woven fabric, right? Um, really, you shouldn't ever see a dart in a knit. Once in a while you do, it's not necessary. That's the beauty of knits is that they do conform to a 3D shape. Can you see that, that it's easy enough to just pull your fabric around, smooth it, and um, drape in a knit. It's probably easier, honestly. Probably if you're draping in a, in a knit, it's almost self-explanatory from this point on, but the woven is a lot more complicated. <laughs> it's this section here that I'm gonna be starting with, this whole panel. So I'm gonna take that block of fabric and make sure I'm just fully covering that section and I can I don't know if you can <laughs> it doesn't look like you can see through this oh yeah can you see those two lines there that's my twill tape and I just want to be able to see that now let's talk about grain line the grain line here how I've got this is off kilter so I want to be able to mark the grain line on this so if I have a very sharp pencil and I lay this down, I can drag that pencil right between two yarns of the fabric and mark my grain line like that. That's kind of a fun little trick. Or just fold that panel in half, give it a quick press, and that's pretty good with the grain line there. I can put that grain line, or the, my folded line, right down the center front, just to make sure I'm staying on green here. Now there would be times where you want to put it on the bias but that's a bit more advanced. So for today, let's just stay with our grain line running right up and down. And I'm just gonna smooth it across the top here. If I can't smooth it right here, it's just because I've got all of this stuff binding on top, so I'm gonna trim some of that away. 
So that's super messy and that's okay because that top edge is going to be cut off anyway. But now I can smooth this out to get that smooth line across my across my top edge here where that where twill tape is. Good. And if I need to cut more, I can cut more or I can just snip into it. Kind of like that just to let it spread out. And then make sure my top edge is smooth. Good? Good. So the top edge is smooth. Now I need to decide what to do with all this fullness underneath. This side, the fullness is coming below my twill tape, so that's actually gonna deal with itself. That'll just disappear. But this side, because I've got that asymmetrical shape, so I could do a dart. That would be the simplest, really. And to do a dart, I would just fold this edge in toward the center. Your fold should be going toward the center. Good, okay. Good, so the dart is one way to deal with that fullness. And so if I wanted to go with that dart, I would make a pencil mark at the point where it seems to blend. And that's about two centimeters or three quarters of an inch from the bust point. It blends just below. And then I would mark the two ends of the dart, right? So I'd be making a mark on the fold here and where that fold comes to. And that's all the information I need for that dart. But there's lots of different things I can do. I don't have to do a dart. I could just start playing around with doing a drapey piece. So I could play around with that. That could be really beautiful. Quite a different look from the dart, right? And if I wanted that, then I would just pin all this down. Um, and this, this part could either be very nice, neatly arranged pleats, or it could just be gathered in there. That's up to the designer, right? But if I wanted to do that, I would just pin that all in place. Okay, so maybe I'll go with that. That's really pretty. So with that all in place, and if I'm happy with how it's laying on both sides of the twill tape, like if I'm happy with the whole perimeter, it seems to be smooth around that perimeter that's marked by twill tape, then I can go ahead and mark my edge. Now I would normally use a good sharp pencil, but just so you can see better, I'm gonna use one of my favorite friction pens. These friction markers are just great for the sewing room. So now what I'm doing is just drawing right beside where my twill tape is. And I'm gonna be drawing to the outside of the twill tape. I'm gonna keep that perimeter smooth. I've got these big gaps at the side seam here. So I'm just going to have to kind of more or less guess where my side seam is going to be. Right down the middle of that piece. Okay, we'll come back to that side. Good. And then the kind of the same thing on the shoulder. I've got a big gap there. So I'll just draw in the middle of that gap. And the outside of the twill tape at the bottom edge. It has to be smooth at that perimeter. I can't have those gathers kind of coming off the edge. It has to be smooth. And if I'm coming up a bit short here, my twill tape is actually a little bit like a half an inch below, I would just pin the piece of fabric on there. Good. Okay, so now I can't take this piece off my dress from yet because I will never get this reorganized in the same way. If I wanted them to be very precisely folded pleats, then I would mark them both sides of the same way I would do the dart. You need to mark the fold and where the fold comes to. The other method you can use to mark those is kind of like cross hatching. So I could do like this, and then when I open it out, I can see where those lines need to come together. Even there, I would like to mark the fold and where the fold comes to. And then I'll just cut off my little corner here so that I can use that to get the little bit that I'm missing. So once I have the entire perimeter marked, then I'll take this piece off, take out all the pins, lay it down flat, and add seam allowance. Then this piece goes back on in the same way, and I'll drape the next piece. Make sense? I'll show you. So before I add seam allowance, I can true my lines using my very firm curved rule. 
and just sort of smooth those out. So I've just trued all the lines. I haven't done down here yet because I need to fold this back together before I can figure out what my shape is going to be there. And I'm going to go with half inch seam allowance on everything. So I'm laying my half inch line along my new green line there. I just need to keep shuffling that half inch line along and just trace when I'm parallel to my line being on that line. I could do larger seam allowance if I wanted, uh, which is sometimes a good idea. But today I'm just gonna keep everything a half inch, but you can choose whatever seam allowance you're more comfortable with. You could just do a quarter inch on a neckline because you end up having to trim that down anyway to make it smooth. You could do a full inch at your side seam and shoulder seam so that you have room for adjusting. It really is up to you. Now I'm going to be folding my pleats back in and I'll just double check this back on the dress form. Okay, good. That looks great. So now with the pleats all folded like that, I'm going to draw my seam allowance in that folded up position. I'll be cutting out the whole piece now. And that folded line is my grain line. And this is front bodice. And I'll call that upper front bodice. So this is my pattern piece. That's gonna go back on the dress form and we'll drape the next piece. So this piece has its seam allowance and I put it back on making sure that those green seam lines are just at the twill tape where they started out. Good? Okay, then I've cut and pressed a second block so that I can drape my second piece here. So again, I just want to start with that area fully covered and with my grain line going perpendicular to the floor, right? I need to decide if I'm going to maybe do this side more tailored and do a dart here. Maybe I do want to just have a dart there or do I want to do more draping in this area so that it kind of has a two-way drape yeah maybe i will just play around with the drape going that way that could be really pretty let's try that i have to think though i think on the left side of this dress there will be a zipper so i don't really want to pile too many layers into the zipper area so i won't have those go into the side seam i'll just have them coming down into the waist seam That looks sort of harmonious. The design is up to you. This is strictly for demonstration purposes. <laughs> okay, so I think that's good. I need to check to make sure the perimeter is smooth all the way around. Sometimes around the armhole here, you have to do a little bit more of that cutting in to make it smooth, but I think I'm in this case, I'm actually okay. So now through my fabric, I can see my original green line and that's where I'm gonna draw. So those two pieces connect together perfectly. Make sense? So I'll just mark that green line here. If you can't see through your fabric, then you'll just feel for that twill tape. And again, you'll draw on the outside edge of the twill tape. So right around to the side here. And again, I've got that big gap of the side seam. So I'm gonna come right down the middle of that. Here's my twill tape at the bottom and it kind of curves up here. So my perimeter is done. Now I need to mark all those little pleats. Okay, I've got the fold marked and where the fold meets the flat, the fabric underneath. So I've marked that on all those little pleats and you can do that cross hatching if you find that helpful. I don't know if it really is that helpful. Okay. That piece is good to go. I'm gonna take it off, true the lines with my two rulers, the curved and the straight, and then add the seam allowance and then cut out those pleats just the exact same way that I did in the first one. It goes back on 
I would then drape the back in the exact same way. I'm not going to do that today though because I want to show you how to drape the skirt. So I'll just do this part really quick and then we'll get onto the skirt. Alright, so this one has its seam allowance on, so I'll be putting it back on the dress form. But this time, I want to pin my two seam lines together. And I'm pinning the green seam line to the green seam line to make sure that my pattern pieces actually fit together. And that that seam line should still run along the twill tape. So that's coming along okay. I'm pretty happy with that. So I would do the exact same thing now for the two back pieces, the upper and the lower bodice, or right and left bodice, whatever you call it, it's up to you. I would do the same thing on that, take them off, add their seam allowance, put them back on, pin the seam allowance together. I'm just going to jump right in to show you how to drape the skirt. So to drape the skirt, you need a bigger block of fabric. Obviously, it's a much bigger piece. And if you're doing a straight skirt, your block doesn't have to be anywhere near as big as if you're doing a full skirt. That makes sense too, right? And if you're doing a symmetrical skirt, you only have to drape half, but mine is slightly asymmetrical here just at the top. And I could add in some asymmetrical detailing here too if I wanted. If I'm doing a full, like an A-line skirt, you have to start with the block fairly, like way higher than you would think because to add in that fullness, we're going to be dropping this down. So let's for the moment pretend this is going to be a symmetrical skirt and that'll be much more clear as to what I'm doing. I can have this edge kind of just past the center front. And because I tore that fabric, I know that that's right on the straight of green. My edge is the straight of green. So now if I'm doing a pencil skirt, I don't have to start this high up. I would just be smoothing that around and putting in darts wherever I wanted them to do that kind of shaping. So pencil skirt, fairly straightforward, right? You just do your shaping at the dart and at the side seam. You get it, right? To do a fuller skirt, it's different from how you'd expect. Every time I drop this fabric down, I'm adding in more fullness into the skirt. Can you see that? And I could add that in with with pleats, with gathers, or I can keep the top edge smooth, but still be adding in fullness at the bottom. That's what I want to show you. So if I want to get a little column of fullness in here, and then I can drop my side again, kind of add in a column of fullness. I want to get rid of this here. That's bugging me. Okay, can you see how that's taking shape? That's beautiful. That's a nice amount of fullness, but it's smooth at the seam. Now, as I say, you can add fullness at the seam if you want as well. I could put in some pleats to kind of reflect what's going on above. It's a total design decision. It's up to you. But once I'm happy, again, I'm just going to draw the perimeter. Above the waist, I probably need to clip in a little bit too, just so I can make that very smooth at the top. And then mark my side seam all the way down that middle, that gap there. I can do things like measure the length that I want and mark the bottom perimeter. But for now, that's really what I wanted to show you, that dropping it down as you move toward the side seam is how you build in that beautiful fullness. You mark your perimeter, you take the piece off, you true your lines, add the seam allowance, and that's your pattern piece. So you'll go through that process with each piece, take each piece off, add the seam allowance, put it back on, pinning the seam allowance together. Then when you have all of your pieces, you'll baste them all together, try it on, do your fitting, and you can adjust your pattern pieces accordingly. And then you'll undo your basting stitches, adjust your pattern if you need to. Each of your draped pieces is now your pattern piece. Your pieces are your pattern pieces. You don't have to transfer it onto paper. You're just gonna use the fabric as your pattern piece. So hopefully that's enough to get you started on draping. It is really a fun and beautiful process. It's so hands-on and tactile, and you really do start to feel like a fashion designer. The world is open to you if you learn some good draping techniques. 
So have fun with it. I hope you did learn something today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, hit that subscribe button for me, please. And hit the notification bell as well so that you know every time I upload a video. So have fun with draping. And till next time, you take care.